Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Orange, Connecticut Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission. We're going to follow an amended agenda tonight on Tuesday, August 14th, 2007. We are at the lower level of the meeting room in Town Hall at 7.31 p.m. The first order on the agenda is the consideration, the first item on the agenda is the consideration of the July 24th, 2007 minutes. If anybody has any amendments or comments, please feel free to make those now. I'm sorry for taking so long, but I hadn't read these. This is the first time I had a chance to read them, so my apologies. Any changes or discussion? Hearing none, I make, entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. Make a motion to approve the July 27th minutes. Thank you, Rick. Somebody second, please. Second. Jim seconds, thanks. All those in favor, please say aye. Any against? Any abstain? You got three there? Yes. Perfect, thank you very much. Routine business, the correspondence. We have a couple of items here, it looks like. Um, one is the CFL newsletter from the Connecticut Federation of Lakes Incorporated. They have a membership drive going, and it looks like about a 10-page newsletter. Anyone's uh, interested in seeing this, uh, please feel free to look at it in town hall. Scott or Katie would have it all circulated here at the meeting. The second item on the agenda is the July-August 2007 Connecticut Wildlife Magazine published by the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection. Beautiful bluebird on the cover. And I'm sure a lot of interesting articles inside uh, for a matter of expediency. I'll circulate it and get on to the rest of the agenda. We have three new applications for receipt tonight. In front of you should have a packet for receipt, 415 Pine Tree Drive. The second one is Farm River Estates on St. John's Drive. And the third one is from the Town of Orange on the old Tavern Road Recreation Area for some pond dredging. Um, no new applications for discussion, but we do have some old business to attend to. Item number four, um, Beach Lawn Terrace. The applicant Scott. is still not ready to go forward and is um, going to be carried over to the October 24th meeting. Uh, September. So, no, August. There we go. That's the mm -hmm. month. <laughs> Our next meeting in two Our weeks, next, folks. Are, are we going to have uh, enough time, or is he going to need an extension? He will be one day uh, <coughs> shy. Just making it. Uh, on okay. That. The next item is Sunrise Hill, the active adult community. I thought I saw Mr. Weeway here. We had uh, deliberations for that, I believe. Unless, Bob, you have something to present? Did, he, uh, did you want to, to address us some more? Yeah, I think there were a couple of items. There were some people who weren't here last time that may have some questions as well. And I believe we had a new mailing to us as well. Yes. That was the um, clarifying the soil scientist's report.
Is Scott, is that the same one as here and dated uh, August 8th to Doug? Yes. Correct. Correct. Good. Okay. We had asked for a hard copy from the office because that didn't wasn't very clear as far as copy goes when it was faxed over. That's right. That's right. I believe the commission has a new map in front of them, if you will, uh, SP4 with revisions of July, which talked about the phasing. That was one of the questions we had. I believe that's the most recent submission. Yeah, I think uh, basically for the record, uh, Robert Weeway and uh, principal with the firm of Codis Fodian Associates uh, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, there are basically two pieces of information that I think were, that were uh, in response to the request from the commission at the previous uh, meeting. Uh, the first one I think you've already mentioned, which was the August 8th letter from David Lord, a uh, soil scientist, which uh, hopefully clarified um, a couple of statements that were in his original review letter. And then the second piece of information is uh, the revised sheet SP4, where we've made a couple of revisions to the construction sequencing. Um, I believe at the request of one of the commission members, we, we kind of moved up the installation of the retaining wall a little bit higher up in the uh, in the sequencing, um, in addition to getting the construction entrance in and just uh, jockeying a couple of the other items that uh, around that were in that. Um, so I would hopefully think that with these last two pieces of information, um, that answers all the outstanding questions that the commission may have and uh, that they would be in a position to take action on this application um, at some point tonight. So with that, uh, if there are any um, other questions that we can answer, we'll certainly try to do that. Thank you, Robert. Commissioners, any questions about the this application whatsoever? How about questions regarding the August 8th letter or the recently submitted at, uh, SP4 with the phasing? Is there 10 different types of homes? Because I see a uh, number eight, construction of model homes. Is there 10 different style units or? No, I think it, with, with what we've got identified in that area, the, the 10 homes are basically grouped on that main entrance area coming in. Um, there are going to be a number of different style homes, but within that first phase, um, they, they want to be able to get the, the vast majority of, uh, or, or the, basically the majority of the offering uh, for, for the remainder of the project, just so they could have the models up in that, in that given area. And I think if you've gone through, because you've been sitting in on the planning and zoning here, and there's a couple of different styles, but with the with the way that the facades are going to be done up in the in the um, in the elevations, there, there's going to be a multitude of uh, of um, combinations that could be achieved throughout the uh, num number of units. Robert, I didn't raise this before, but I did highlight it and missed it at the last meeting. There was a, a note, number four, and a general note that some of the foundation drains may require mechanical means to discharge into the proposed storm drain system. Is that like a sump pump, or what is that? Yeah, if it's by mechanical means, that's exactly what that means. It would have okay. to be by, um, you know, typically it would be a sump pump. 
I think for the most part, um, that's a, that's a pretty uh, typical note that we put on the drawings. Um, I think if you take a look at what we have uh, shown on the uh, site grading and utility plan, I believe almost all the buildings are tied in via gravity into the um, into the uh, storm system. Would there be a mark? Or you just can't anticipate which ones may need the pump already? No, no. I, with the way that we've got it designed and laid out on here right now, all, all the buildings are going to discharge via, via gravity, via either, gravity. either okay. directly into the uh, storm drain system or, um, or via o overland. And we typically put that note on there because if there are field changes that come up where foundation heights may, may, may vary, if, if the foundation heights or if the, if the uh, basement floors get set lower than what we called for on the drawing for whatever reason, then, uh, then they may not be able to tie in via, via gravity. So that's why we typically keep Understand. that note on there. Thank you. Ladies, gentlemen. Scott, any thoughts, comments, concerns by other uh, town employees that may address this typically, like the sign uh, department sign-offs? I don't recall any of that. Robert, while we have a little lead time here, around the tennis courts, is that going to require a retaining wall as it abuts towards the... Uh With the way that we've got it shown right now, I believe it's the north, basically the north to northwest corner right. um, is shown as a retaining, retaining wall. Retaining wall. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to figure out that, how that slope would be yep. there and how that would be held up. I have nothing more. Anyone else? Thank you, Scott. I think I think those were I think I'm actually we, we went through all this, but certainly yeah, you can go through it, that it again. It seems the last like meeting. it is from no, Ed Lieberman so and Fred Schumacher here, Paul Denise as well. Um, Ed signed it without any comments. Fred Schumacher has uh, looks like a paragraph and a half. I'll oh, just sorry, somebody couldn't read it. It was Rick yeah, couldn't read his writing. That's read what his it was. You were not here <laughs> that for that. That's what. It was. Oh, that's right. It was then read into the record. That's right. Well, I'll, since I asked, I'll read it. It says, because of the density of the project, the complex drainage issues arising from deep cuts into the saturated till, naturally occurring seeps, and the significant increase in impermeable surfaces, I recommend that the commission consider engaging a services of an independent engineer to review and evaluate the storm and groundwater drainage and proposed detention basin expansion. Anyone else want to see this? Thoughts or comments? Thank you, Scott. You want to put that back in the record? Most of the, I only had a couple of comments, and they were will be probably, um, hopefully the commission will accept them as conditions of, of approval when we get to that point. Okay. That's all. Are you ready to deliberate? Nothing more for, for Robert? So pretty much the last chance you get to see him, I guess. Thank yeah. you, Robert. No, no, nah, he'll be back. So. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant by that is typically once deliberations start, you don't start questioning the applicant and asking for new information. Ladies, gentlemen, we could move on to the other two items on the agenda. And yeah. uh, Scott suggested that we could move on to other items on the agenda and come back to this. Um, if we do that, I doubt it would be tonight. The other items are very brief. Oh. Does anyone want to amend the agenda and move on? No, no, we're not going to amend it. It's just a continuation of where we are for discussion. All right, I would I would agree with that. I don't. I'm not sure why. I'd I'd like to tend to it now if we could, unless somebody just wants to ponder it while we take care of other business. Thoughts, please help me. Why would we move forward and change the subject? What advantage, I guess, why would we move off of this it seems application? Like it it just nobody wanted it. to move, so it was just a, a thought process. 
just updates of what other things that were going on and mm -hmm. I'd like to continue if we could and, and talk about this one if anybody has any thoughts or comments discussion amongst us I Drew. agree okay let's move let's continue with this one Robert, you may have a seat if oh, you like. There's okay. no reason that we, we should, if they're going to deliberate, there's no reason that they should be asking you for any more material. Okay, yeah. If, uh, if anything needs to be clarified, then we'll, we'll be there. You know All where right. to find us. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone want to review where we were? Walter. No more questions. Why don't we go along and uh, make a motion that we accept the condition? Your pleasure, please go ahead if you'd like to make a motion. What are the dates on that, that condition list? I, I want to make sure that I have the right one stuck in here. Yeah. Oh, it's not dated. The, I can quickly tell you, if you've got a 12A, then it's the latest one and you have a 12A. Ah, good, thank you. I thought I had it and I just want to make sure. Shall we pass that to Walter? Or Walter, do you have the list of conditions? No, I do not. It's okay. Not okay. Would you formally make the motion uh, by the title of the uh, application and description, if you'd like? I move that we accept the uh, uh, of uh, what's the name of it? It's actually Fieldstone Fieldstone Village. Village. Fieldstone Village, I guess it is. That's not sunrise anymore? No, we just was prepared for sunrise. Oh. Oh, we prepared for. All right, and I will correct it to the Fieldstone Village, and and that was successor of Sunrise Hill Estates LLC, right? That's the applicant. That's okay. the applicant. You want to go through the conditions? I haven't heard a second yet. Uh, Scott, indeed. I'll second it. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank You're you. Welcome. Any conditions? I think Walter's looking for you to help him go through those. As you go ahead. <laughs> Diana? I wasn't at the last meeting, so. Okay. Uh, item number one, which is permit will be issued upon completion and receipt of the contractor's knowledge and form, which is an administrative process so we know what, how things are going. Item number two, any deviation from the approved site plan uh, dated 62607 and revised to whatever that 717. was. 717. 717.07, prepared by Cota Spodi and Associates, etc. Uh, the commission shall number three. The commission shall be notified of any change in engineering firm currently currently code supporting associates. Uh, well, the enforcement officers will be notified for the inspection of S and E controls prior to construction. I believe a deed restriction was already placed on those wetlands uh, as part of the original subdivision. I will check on that, but we will go with item number six with a. If it has been done, we will omit that. Item number seven, in the event that the um, detention pond or the infiltration galleries are not maintained by the owners, the town has the right to maintain the property and bill the owner. Uh, for subdivision, 
I believe, again, there's also a deed restriction that has been placed on that uh, wetland, but I will double check on that. We do have, I believe, 24-hour contact names and phone numbers of the construction supervisor and the engineering firm. We do have a construction timetable sequence. Now, item number 15 is developer shall retain an independent site monitor will provide weekly status reports to the commission during construction. That was one of the areas where I have some concern. If you will look at um, the detail for the pond berm, it's a rather proprietary construction method to hold that together and quite frankly I do not have the expertise or the knowledge to be able to ensure that the proper materials there are there that they are properly compacted etc and I believe that that needs to be done with some type of um, outside or the in-house uh, engineering engineer or other suitably qualified individual to uh, oversee the construction of the berms and pervious core. You'll find that on SP 16, kind of in the center of the page. There is uh, sieve analysis, compaction analysis, and type of material that is uh, required for that. Like I said, quite frankly, it's just not something I can would feel comfortable looking at. And also uh, to go along the lines of uh, what Mr. Schumacher brought to the attention of the commission is uh, is um, do you want an ind independent monitor on, on site for some of the um, drainage issues? I'll agree with that. And just before I forget, the plan was a revised phasing plan was zero eight zero eight zero seven. I don't know. I don't think you had that right date for the. I said July seventeenth. You have a one for August eighth. That's the okay. The but that's the, the that's one. SP four. SP four. So F and then SP four revised to eight eight. Right, because we're going to be using this plan for the phasing. phasing. For the phasing, yeah. And one of the other things I think is, is so totally different from this project than any project that this commission has ever seen before is that there are going to be um, the addition of the sewer lines that are, we are actually approving. We've approved the sewer connection from Derby to Orange, but the actual sewer lines that are going into uh, the project I'm not sure. I believe Derby might be the one that's going to be inspecting them, and I'm, I'm not sure what the status is going to be with, with the orange WPCA as far as inspection goes, but um, they, they are going to be probably one of the first items that can win, as all utilities usually do, and that's something that, um, in addition to air testing, I feel that they should um, TV camera those lines when they're done to make sure everything is the way it is supposed to be. I'm not sure. Is, is does the WPCA do a, a field survey for an as-built, just uh, for proper drainage through the clean-outs or There's with a they, camera? They don't, uh, Orange has, I don't know if they require, um, has required, the WPCA has required uh, the, the uh, camera Well, like once the they come into Orange, are we responsible for that? I mean, the <coughs> WPCA in Orange? I don't understand. Who's good to make sure that it's going to flow? I believe that there was uh, an, uh, some conversation at the WPCA, which I am also staff to, uh, that Derby also was going to uh, want to inspect that, th those lines per their agreement. Now, whether that holds true across the board to this point, I honestly don't know if that is still going to be the case, whether there is going to be a double uh, are, are you saying that inspection. you wanted, I'm sorry, Scott, are you saying you wanted as a condition that we should have them inspected on the orange side whether or not derby does or not That's they should condition. be not only inspected during installation but they should also be um, videoed inside uh, as part of um, you know, a yeah. conditional approval yeah because they go over excavate it could be a soft spot and the pipe could belly belly up right yeah. which is not going to show for a while you know right right off so that's the only reason i bring bring that as a condition also Thank you. That, that was more than I expected, quite frankly. Uh, any other thoughts or, or that with those conditions? Well, I'm just looking at the uh, 
phase one, are they going to go in order before they build the, the homes? Is this how this is going to work? Or are they going to do a phase one all in conjunction, all seven items or eight items? You asked that similar question, a, another, I think, of a week ago. Another week ago, I asked, yeah. I asked for the retaining wall to be constructed, which it right. is in there. Yeah. I just didn't want them to build 10 units before they do the wall. <laughs> yeah. right, which part are you questioning? Well, I mean, could they start off building the 10 units and then work backwards, or do they have to go from one down? No, I, it's the, the construction model homes at entrance intersection, the 10 plus units is item number eight down on the list. That's what I'm saying. So they're going to follow the list. They pretty much need to in order right. to make this project go right and to coincide with what you uh, requested as far as the retaining right. wall okay. goes. Okay, so that's what I'm asking. I mean, it's, there's obviously there's phases. No, I understand the phases, but I mean, phase one is phase one they could say you know we'll build the 10 units first do the retaining wall next because it's in phase one <laughs> right that's why even I'm, though it's number eight you're saying yeah. you know what i'm saying because yes. it is phase one but i'm just trying to clarify that so phase when you, one when is you, in numerical when you go out there and they're building the homes and not the wall you know you don't have an issue mm -hmm. well <laughs> then you certainly could request that they try to go stay in, in the order that uh, it's, well, it's okay it's in yeah. phase one but you know what i'm saying yes yeah, right. okay it. jim did you have something well, I was going to say uh, the condition phase one be that it be sequential per mm -hmm. the revised phase plan of August 8th, 07. Perfectly well put. That's it right there. Walter, your original motion now has um, standard conditions of approval and at least two additions that aren't standard uh, to the extent that there's uh, complexities of a sewer system, especially as it passes across a town or municipal boundary, and then secondly, regarding the, the okay. numerical order. Do you accept those? Yes. Good. Anyone? You still accept yes, those? Yes, I still second, The second still remains, so it is still good. Discussion regarding the motion. Any other thoughts, comments? Drew? Pretty simple, but where are they showing? <laughs> What's the symbol for I think you're let, let your button, button in. There you go. Let it go now. There you go. Sorry. Yeah, much better. Uh, what's the uh, symbol for a silt fence? The I symbol just, for silt fence? Yeah, I was just trying to look at that. Well, it's going to be SI on their plan. Okay. Yep. Actually, that's a good one on. Uh, and you should see a rather substantial amount of SI. I do. Depends on which one you're looking at. Though. Well, just look, look at the revised. Oh, I, the revised but I don't have that in front of me. Revised. I have it just buried here. Scott, are you going to choose the monitor for this uh, detention pond? Or are you going to let the in-house engineering sign off on it? I think that probably is going to be up to the applicant to decide how they want to handle that, whether they want to bring in their bring in the same designer of the which would make I think the most sense but um, I don't think that I can dictate in this particular instance you know they have to obviously prove to me that the person knows what they're doing let's put it that way well, there should be some sort of engineer to stamp it to say it's gonna hold here you go <laughs> <All> right <laughs> well I, yeah I don't need a uh, um, you know an electrical engineer we need someone more familiar with site work. Drew, do you have thoughts about the, the symbol now or where you see the dotted lines attached to that? Uh, During the phasing, that'll be adjusted, I assume. I didn't, wouldn't expect it to move, would you? Depending upon conditions, sometimes no, they so move, yeah. sometimes they don't. But you, because this is a wide open pallet, as it were, it's not like we have trees it's not like we have you know ledge to deal with etc uh, there there may be a, a seat that gets opened up and we end up with a torrent a spot that it wasn't expected and you're going to get a lot of erosion and like you know there may be some immediate field adjustments and and I also noticed today as a matter of fact that they do have a breach in their in their silt fence now 
that's out there at the end of Skyview uh, by the uh, state garage again. So it's one of those things that's an ongoing situation regardless. Somebody so monitors that. Yeah, I think there was an original. There was an original s substandard, if that's perhaps not the right the word. The undersized, the yeah. um, post, which was did not have this, the. Uh, so they had to replace it. Screening capabilities that the uh, 2006 road bridges and whatever manual, DOT yeah. manual, was not followed. So that still has to be. The, meet those specs, and I believe that is on the drawings. Diana, um, I'm not sure if this was, just, was discussed at the last meeting, but it was at the the previous meeting that the possibility of seeps may be found here and mm -hmm. excess of water. Um, if that occurs, what I would like to see is that they have to call the engineer out. That they don't do some sort of a field decision, changing things. You Which engineer? I mean? The one that's monitoring the pond, or Robert Weeway? Whichever is One fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't think. I think I think it would be better if it was um, Robert Weeway since yeah. he designed the system. Right. But I wouldn't want to see any field changes here. Um, but if there are problems or concerns, I think the engineer needs to deal with it. Are you talking about the retaining wall? No, I'm talking about if they open up. You know, there was a question about whether they would open up seeps and they'd start having lots of flows Flow, coming yeah. from one area or the other, and then have to deal with it. I I I wouldn't want to see. You know contractors doing that without some approval from the engineer and I think it's a very very good point only because when the site work was done for the uh, 20 lots I guess basically what it is there 21 lots the uh, infrastructure that was put in they ran into several seeps mm -hmm. in several different areas and there were a lot of um, curtain drains put in as, as field changes that I um, quite frankly from what I could tell, a couple of them have failed already, and there's nothing that's even occurred after that. So I, I think that's a very, a, a very, very good point. Very good point, and that's part of us again t dovetailing on the, what Mr. Schumacher. Does do I in, is inherent in that, Diana? I thought that if Robert finds something, he is going to make a change. He's going to come back to Scott and perhaps back to us if it's a substantial. Substantial, enough. yeah, yeah. I right. would think that would be inherent. Thank you. Others. Jim, Drew, Walter, gentleman on my left here now. We'll ponder that for a moment and then we can move it to a vote. Commissioners, all those in favor of this application as uh, proposed with uh, several conditions which will be put in writing to the applicant. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Abstain? I'll abstain just because I missed the last meeting. Diane is the only abstinent. Everybody else voted aye and Leslie's not here. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck on your project. It's a very important one to the town. Thank you very much. Scott, I think you probably are going to deal with this next item on the flooding remediation at the Wepawag River. Thoughts on that? There was a meeting July 31st, uh, actually three weeks ago tonight, that was attended by two commissioners, so it was uh, not a quorum. However, I think it, it is um, important that there is probably a little bit of discussion, um, as to including myself, as to what occurred out there and basically it was a an, an overview of um, the proposal this as this help? You, you all had seen it and I know uh, Mr. Lieberman at this point is drawing up a much better uh, berm detail on, on on this but I mean both Walter and Jay I think can, uh, we're out there it is a rather substantial project it's got to be probably close to 400 feet across uh, that area with very minimal uh, disturbance really to to the whole area uh, it's one of those things that it, it's it's really got to just be done and, and done 
all at one shot if at all possible but it is it's an ambitious project and was, and was there discussion scale. about the material there I mean we, we raised that uh, originally I think when um, the first selectman was here that we were concerned that or at least I was about that we just don't put a we can't have sand yeah, and, we, and see this thing go wash away at the first thrust one of the things we uh, did find out is that um, one of the processing plants I believe on the other side of the Housatonic uh, has a material that they call uh, sump fill and when they s uh, create the grout with the stone the washed stone they get this really heavy wet thick clay material that is basically excess for them and they, they sell it incredibly inexpensively by the by the yard uh, and I guess it is quite uh, a good material to use to create such such a berm with I guess it hardens up like iron hmm. and it's it's it's, it's would impervious. that then negate the need for uh, if you will rocks or boulders on on the water side I think you should always have well, again it's you know like a breakwater Rick, if I'm not mistaken, when I asked a question, I thought he said he had some uh, shot rock or he was going to put in there. I, I, this it's evolving. This may go on. As, I, I as think that's called okay. pond fill, which it is heavy yeah, clay some material. Some fill, pond fill. Right, when it gets mm -hmm. dry, but what happens when it gets wet? For becomes slushy. Why? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't say it becomes slushy, but oh, I know dear. what it is. It's yeah. uh, right, usually I like call it pond fill. It's a heavy, heavy thick clay. It can be yeah. used as the core. Yeah, the and then build around it but yeah. see and that goes back to with the pond dredging of Old Tavern Road um, recreation area what they may come up with well they may come up with some very good material there to do could a be gravel uh, to do a core with or it could be gravel we don't yeah we don't know we don't all know right well you keep dredge. us updated because we probably don't even have a timetable on this project mm -hmm. going to try to do it this fall I think I would hope Jim do you have something to add yeah, we, what we talked about was basically three phases. The first phase would be to put the berm in, and it would be capped with, with riprap, wherever you could get that. Second phase, in conjunction with the first phase, would be to file for a uh, permit with the DEP, Corps Army, maybe not the Army Corps, but DEP, to take out a ridge that's formed in the brook right there. And what happens is the brook, when it, and when it swirls and gets high water, it's taking the stone and putting them almost like a dam, which would be on the north side of the brook. So it forces the water to go to the south side. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> and in conjunction with that, would be to excavate that out, take out that some of that hard right angle that the water has to make before it goes under the bridge. And then in addition, um, where Racebrook and Wepawa converge, try to clean some of that out to remediate that area as well. So the permit would try to cover two areas if we could do that. Yeah, that, that second item that you mentioned about trying to redesign a river, it, it depends on the age of the river, the condition and all, that could reoccur over and over again until right. the river bottom actually becomes what they know, call as armored and then it won't change. And I doubt that that river's got an armored bottom. And uh, even if we did dredge it or get permission to do so, my guess is it would be back before you would even blink. And that, with that stone, what they would do is put it on the south side of the bank, the embankment, yeah. to try oh, to. Yeah. But that you answered the question. All right, thanks. Anybody else? Yeah. Rick, did uh, Mr. Lieberman calculate for something being 400 feet long, the pressure of the water and what size this berm has to be? There is. There is that red light caught me again. There is going to be, um, that is in the works. I'm not sure exactly who's going to be doing that. Because but I it know could it's be a works. big mess if, if it doesn't hold. That was brought up while we were out there, and I think w most everybody was pretty much in agreement that we're, we're not talking, um, you know, two or three feet of water because it's going to be so far back away from the river. It's, you know, you're looking at more, more or less inches rather than feet. So... But still, that's part of, of the calculations. And I think to go back to what uh, Jim was saying is that there's actually an island in the middle of the river now because of the way the cobbles kept building up in the center and it's going around it. So once this channel is reestablished again, 
and all that cobble is used to um, armor chink the bank with, mm -hmm. quite frankly, at that point, it probably should really stay within its banks. It's just that it's, there's no stream channel anymore. It's, it's filled in, in in that area. That's Substantially. Good. I mean, it's probably a, close to 10 inches above the water table out, out, of, out of where it is of just this big island in the middle of, of the stream channel. So mm -hmm. that's what's, what Jay's alluding to. It needs to come out of there and, and stabilize it. The third, the third phase would be to make sure that all the downstream debris in the brook has been removed, all the down trees, and they don't act like dams to prevent the flow from going where it's supposed to go. This may be uh, way beyond spring then. This berm is actually probably uh, on the far end, it's probably 350, 400 feet from the main course of the river. I mean, there's a big plateau mm -hmm. in there where the water is going to, uh, so I mean, you, you could put an awful lot of water in there before it ever gets to the top of this berm. We don't, we're not talking a berm here of, you know, five or six feet. No, it's two, two, two feet. Maybe, I, maybe, I had maybe. Uh, one question asked about that and someone answered maybe up to 48 inches. But nonetheless, I don't know how much pressure that is if you have a plateau that builds up like a lake and now you have a two to four foot structure. I don't know how strong those are. Well, that would be up to uh, Ed to decide how yeah. wide to make the berm or right. get, you know, engineering facts to what, what would pressure be there. It Correct. And I, again, that's, that's in, that's that's in, I'm in not play. sure whether they're that's being taken to a to, to a higher level of of uh, engineering stress loads. Do you want to continue, Scott, with the legal posting notice? I, oh, I'm sorry, Diana. Yeah. I didn't mean to stop. Um, it sounds like the cleaning out downstream is the last phase. The, the at the confluence of the getting the stream channel reestablished uh, is probably going to take quite some time. So, uh, I'm, depending upon. But yes, that's that. That is the plan at the moment. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to go that way. But getting us. You have a concern, Diane, about the, the timing. Well, it just makes more sense. I think sometimes, you know, my experience is you try to block the water from going somewhere, and it doesn't work as well as if you provide a different place for it to go. So if it's blocked going downstream, you want to clean the downstream out so that the water can go there. So Once you. What, well, once you put the berm in and you haven't cleaned downstream, then you haven't resolved the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jim, Jim, if you're gonna, okay. you just, you come up. yeah, you can I, come up. It's just that no one else at home. We are live tonight. I, I would like to ask that that would be looked at by Ed Lieberman. Do you not want to unblock where you want the water to go first, rather than, you know, trying to pull it there? I understand what you say, but what's confusing probably is that we are talking two different water courses. The, the race brook is clogged up at the end f fairly near where it reaches the Weppel Walk. And it's the Weppel Walk that we need to get channelized first and, and stabilized and then get, the, get that back where it belongs and then clean up the race brook where it meets the Weppel Walk so that it doesn't back up into Surrey Drive from the south side. So you've got water coming from the north and water coming from the south, two different water courses. No, I think what oh, Diane gotcha. is saying, okay. Scott, is that in conjunction with the berm, it, it could be simple task to take the deadfall out of the stream before it even gets the confluence of the Raysbrook and Weppelwalk. That was my intent, too, that you clear it out so that it has a straight flow. And then uh, while the permit is in the place, um, you could do that. It doesn't have to be phase three. It could be done the same time we do the berm. Agreed. Agreed. Just bring it up for consideration next time you have uh, a chance. Absolutely. Thank you. Other thoughts on this? Legal posting notice. Scott, again. 8807. 8807, I went to the board You of liked selection. it better when it was broken, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Eight eight oh seven. You're hiding your broken yes, over there. I am. Went to the board of selectmen. They had some comments. One of them we um, had already taken care of, which was uh, the f for some reason they ended, they ended up with the the um, our 
form that we deliberated on about direct wetlands impacts as opposed to um, uh, regulated activity where we uh, flopped back and forth between the two, especially under watercourse crossing, it was supposed to be direct wetland uh, activity rather than a uh, wetland activity fee. So we, we, that was one of their comments. Again, that was done. Uh, I think it was uh, Selectman Gold that uh, noticed that modification or extension of a, a previous approval as opposed to a previous approval needed to be corrected. Or impervious. Uh, no, cur I know. Previous. Yeah, previous. Just the E and the R were, and we all read right over that, including myself. And then there was some concern about uh, the one acre threshold for stormwater discharge to an area $200 per acre of impervious surface, including roofs, based on a one acre threshold. And I believe I got the impression that they m maybe wanted that. It may have been a little bit too onerous at a half acre threshold. Uh, what would the terms be then again? I don't, I don't remember that one. Stormwater discharge to a wetland area, which is something we have not changed, it's been in our regulations for a while, has been $200 per acre of ins impervious surface, including roofs. And we should probably, if we want to leave it that way, based on one acre thresholds, uh, or we can, I think again, that may have been. Selectman Goldblatt uh, questioned whether there would be a half acre threshold. And he was doing it in the form of dollars. So in other words, instead of it being $400 if you had uh, a quarter of an acre or one and a quarter acres, could it be uh, $300? To give a scale. To give a yeah. scale. So anyone have an objection to the scale? I, I have, I could care less either way. It's not going to raise a lot of money. An acre at a time seems to be some people's thoughts. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, we have to go back to the board of selectmen again anyway? Mm, I don't do believe so because I believe they adopted it as pretty much as long as with, with, with these Correct. with, with the corrections with okay. and, and then word actually was clarify um, 8d and again that is that's the threshold I think probably okay. based on a one acre threshold would would clarify that comment Rick did you have a thought about it I saw you reaching forward no I was just wondering if that's how it's in our regs now that's how it's in our regs now and we had to go to the board of selectmen in order to send all this to the DEP mm -hmm. So any any amendments that we make now has to be approved by the commission. But at this a clarification, I think the two words based on which will change an entire legal document. I realize that, but in this particular instance, I don't think it's going to t totally alter our regulations. It will just clarify them. So um, basically, what is your pleasure, it commissioners? It, it just seems as. Uh, just think of what, what kind of applications could come in. Some may be one acre, one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a third. Are they for every increment above one? Do you charge an extra two hundred dollars? I do, and the only reason I had done that initially, or it was voted on initially, and I think when it was talked about initially, is that it was to prevent people from saying, "Well, you know, I only got one point one five acres over here, so I might as well just say there's only one. Who's going to be able to figure it out?" And, and it, quite frankly, I mean, that was the reason for it. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you know, you get to the point where it's like a little bit here, a little bit there, and next thing you know, there's no wetlands left. They're all filled in. So as soon as you cross the one acre, you have to have another $200. You cross two acres, $600. Dollars. $400. Four. Oh, you, you, yeah. The third one. The third okay. one. You're right. I don't want to change it. Anyone else? But we will make it based on then, right? Yep. Based anyway, everyone agree? Thoughts? Good. That's the way it is. Okay. Next item on the agenda. It's still Scott. It's like his show tonight. An enforcement officer's report. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> the hourglass. <laughs> we I did get a complaint yesterday afternoon um, from a resident over at um, Avalon Bay about some trucking activity occurring in what they felt was a wetland. There is some trucking activity that went through an old farm road that did indeed go through a, 
a wetland, but it has been there for an incredibly long time. Uh, in the in the in the decades of time, Farm Road, um, and it was a. But it, the, the operation has been stopped at the moment, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done to get some silt fence up and um, silt sacks into the roads. Some of the um, one small wetland area was, because it's so dry, wasn't deemed to be a wetland by the property owner. Um, they need to restore that wetland, which they were in the process of doing this afternoon. I will get back in there tomorrow morning, but I just want to keep that one on the list because it was um, rather extensive. But we will um, keep you apprised of that. There are multiple crossings? There and it always has been multiple crossings. There has been. Okay. This this property actually goes right up to um, uh, the Paper Edison Road mm -hmm. behind Avalon and up towards uh, Stu Leonard's parcel. Any others? That's it. The next item on the agenda tonight is uh, for executive session. If I could have a motion to go to executive session and then come back, and if we have any actions there, we'll do that in the back in the public session. It is now um, 8.23. May I have a motion to adjourn to executive session? A motion to adjourn. Someone second? Drew seconds it. Thank you very much.